Hey guys, so here we are. We're going to try to do this homework, the 7.7, .7, actually 7.8 packet. Um, it looks like this, okay? It's a, the, the packet I gave out on Friday. If you weren't there, um, it's posted. Um, if you look at it, it's posted, you'll see there's some repeat problems um, between page three and four. All right, so really just, you know, don't, don't redo these problems that are on page three. Uh, for yourself and I'll have all the um, solutions online as well for you to check but this is just to help you in case you're having trouble with any of it so if I'm looking at sine of P right for myself sine of P I'm um, starting at P here and remember when you're doing these you want to write out maybe for yourself to start so Katoa I right, to help you remember that when you're doing the sine of an angle you are looking for the opposite which is 4 root 10 all right that's our opposite and we're doing that over the hypotenuse, which is 14 there. So, right, I look and I reduce that one, and that's, you know, the 4 and the 14. So I get 2 root 10 over 7, and there's my final answer for the sine of P. Okay, as I do the cosine of P, right, I'm looking at, I'm starting at P. Remember, cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So I look at this, the adjacent side is 6. The hypotenuse, which is across from that right angle, is 14. So I get 3 sevenths as my answer. Okay, so again, that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And we're talking about the legs there when we're doing this. The sine was the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? Okay, so we always write this at the top. We just kind of follow our, our formula. It's basically a formula. And once you know the formula, right, it's, um, it's pretty straightforward, okay? So the tangent of P, um, let's see, from tangent, tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, right? So the tangent, um, uh, tangent of P is 4 root 10 over six, uh, I can reduce that because four because I can take two out of both of these. Remember, you can't divide this number. That's a radicand. You can only divide coefficient from coefficient, right? And so it just stays as two root ten over three. Okay, so all of these are basically the same. You're just going to go through and you're going to set up those ratios. I don't think any of these are harder. Um, it's just repetition and practicing. Okay, um, let's see. Let's see if I can find one that I think is going to be a little bit harder. Well, let's let's try number five here, and I'll go through number five. Right. Again, all the solutions will be online, right? But I'm just going to pick a selected few. You don't, I don't think you need me to talk through every single one here. Um, so skip around the video as you need, as you see fit, right? To help you to do this the best you can. Okay. So the sine, right? Opposite is five. Hypotenuse is five root two. I reduce it because the fives are, the, you know, both integers are going to reduce. I get that can't leave a radical in the denominator so I multiply the top and bottom by root 2 so I get root 2 over regular 2 there's my sine of P okay and if I do cosine of P alright cosine adjacent over hypotenuse hey look I'm gonna get the same thing look at that's the same thing so I'm not even gonna bother to do all this work I know what the answer is gonna be because I just did it look I saw the same thing here for the for, for the first two so I just said well why why bother to do all that work, right? Let's just save ourselves a little bit of time. Tangent of P, opposite over adjacent, five over five, reduces down to one. Okay? All right, that's what it comes down to. These ones are nice. There weren't any uh, even any Pythagorean theorem, right, to do here. Um, this is the only one on the set that you're gonna have to rationalize, so that's why I chose to do that one. Okay. If I go down to seven, find the value of x rounding all lengths to the nearest tenth and all angle measures to the nearest degree. Okay, so seven, I need to find an angle measure, and I'm looking at it, and I say, okay, this eight, that is the adjacent side to the angle, and this 18, that is the hypotenuse, because it's across from, it's opposite that right angle there. So adjacent and hypotenuse, I look back up here. Oh, cosine uses adjacent and hypotenuse. Okay, I'm going to do cosine of x degrees equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse. If I reduce it, actually I don't even need to reduce it. Remember, we're using our trig table here, right, for ourselves. And um, so it's the eight divided by 18, all right? So that gives me 0.4 repeating. I get my trig table here, okay. And I'm doing cosine, so on my trig table, I'm looking under the cosine table, right? I'm going down to 0.4 repeating. Whoop, and I just keep going until I get down to it. And let's see, it's between 0.454 and 0.4384. Man, it seems smack dab in the middle, so let me think about how far away it is, okay? So if we look at it, right, we see that the cosine of, um, let's see, let me go back here again, right? The cosine of 63 is equal to about 0.4540, 
and the cosine of 64 is about equal to 0.4384. This is a great example because this one, man, 0.4 repeating a smack dab in the middle. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to figure out how far apart they are, right? So I'm going to take 0.4540 and I'm going to subtract by 0.4444 for repeating. And I can see this is off by... 0 0.00956, okay? And then I'm going to take the 0 0.4384 and I'm going to subtract by 0 0.4444444 repeating. And I see that I'm off by 0 0.0060. Okay, okay, I can see that this one's closer. So it's 64, that's my correct answer, okay? So to get these again, right, in case you went through that too quickly, I saw what the answer was and I just took this minus this. 0.4540, I subtracted by 0.4 repeating. It told me that's how far it was off. I took this, subtracted by 0.4 repeating. It says it's off by that, okay? This one's off by, this one's closer because it's off by less, right? So that's why I said 64 is my answer for that one. Okay, so that's a, that's, that's a tricky one because it's right in the middle. We haven't seen one that hard yet right, in terms of doing the angles. Okay, if you're looking at eight and nine, eight and nine, we're finding some side lengths here. So um, I'm gonna pick nine, right, and do that one. It doesn't matter, they're both the same, basically. If I'm picking this one, I can see that I have an angle here. I have the adjacent also, I'm trying to find the adjacent. So, I'm sorry, the opposite, I'm trying to find the opposite. And I have the hypotenuse. So I'm gonna use sine because I have the opposite and the hypotenuse, so x over 15, okay. I'm gonna get rid of the sine of 28 here. So look on my chart. Find 28, right? Go to the sine column, comes down 0.4695. Okay, so I always, I always like to get rid of that sine of 28 first. Get, just get rid of it. Right? If you have any for trig, we'll, t we'll do it a little differently. But really, to get us started here, as we're just starting to understand these trig functions, starting to, to get the hang of them, right? Just get rid of it right away. Easiest way to go. So I get. Um, let's see, it says round to the nearest tenth. I got 7.0425, so I'm just going to write 7.0, oops, sorry, tenth, right, 7.0. Make sure you have the zero there just so we know that it's rounded off there, okay? All right, so that's that page there, okay? Now, let's see, so um, if I'm looking at the next page, man, there looks a, like a lot of repeats in terms of just this practicing and going through and doing the same thing, all right? Um, let me do another angle one because I felt like the angle one was a little bit harder here. All right, so I'm gonna do number 10. I look at the angle. I see that given is the opposite and I have the hypotenuse, so that's gonna tell me to use the sine ratio. Opposite six, hypotenuse is nine. Six divided by nine is 0.6 repeating. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my, go to my handy dandy trig table. Here we go, All right? 10, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's it. We're at number 10. Right? Point, we're in the sine column, so look for 0.6 repeating. I just keep going down, okay? And you can see this one's going to be a little bit easier, right? Because 0.6 repeating is between uh, 0.656 and 0.669, but we can see they're a lot closer to that 42. So this one, right, a whole lot easier, right? Let's use that one, okay? Remember, I'm using these about equals two signs to tell people, hey, this is not exact, it's not precise. I've rounded off my answers there, okay? So. The rest of those kind of are the same type of problem, right? You just use the trig ratio. Okay, I'll do one more, right? Um, let's see, I'm gonna pick one more. How about I pick um, number 14 here? If I'm looking at 14, right, right in the middle, you can see that from X, I have the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So that tells me to use the cosine ratio because cosine is always the adjacent over hypotenuse. If, if this doesn't make sense to you because you missed Friday, look back at the notes, read the notes, you can see all those ratios, right, they're basically formulas, you just fit in, fit in the ratio to the, the correct one. So, all right, 16 over 20, all right? Again, you don't need to reduce. We just need to know what that decimal is. If you can't do it in your head, all right? You just put it in your calculator. I need to know which angle has a cosine of 0.8. So I'm gonna look under the cosine, I'm looking for 0.8. Okay, let's see how this one's gonna be. This one, it's 0.8 is between 0.809 and 0.798. All right, I'm looking at those, which one's closer. You know, first I was thinking, oh, this this um, 36 is closer. I was thinking this one was closer, but hey, that's that's off by nine, nine thousandths, and this is off by two thousandths, right? So it's gonna be 37 degrees, because that's closer, right? We're looking for one that's off by less.
Okay, and of course you can use your calculator to help you do this if you prefer, but as I said before, I think the trig table, you can have better luck with it. Looking at that next section there, yeah, I know the numbering is kind of funky, right? It goes back to number three. But if you look at it, these are just showing you some examples of the real world examples that I showed you, um, like for examples four through six from the notes, right? The nice part is not word problems, so it's already drawn out for you. So really it's the same problem as what we just did there. You pick out the trig ratio you're going to do, right? And you round to the nearest tenth because it tells you to, okay? All right, looking at the next page, same thing, real world examples. But they're already drawn out for us, so we don't have to sketch it. So you just use the trig ratio that you have there, or sorry, that you need there. Okay? So um, let's see, let's do number nine, because this one we have to sketch out. A person standing 30 feet from a flagpole. Okay? So I'm going to call that P. And they're standing 30 feet from a flagpole. Okay? Here's the flagpole. You can see the top of the pole at an angle of elevation of 35 degrees. Remember that angle of elevation is always off the horizontal, right? Horizontal, it's always off that, so, right, every single time, okay? So, um, let's see, it wants to, the, per, the person's eye level is five feet from the ground, okay? Okay, so there's the ground, that's five feet. I should put these feet markers on it. It's nice that everything's in feet here. Find the height of the flagpole to the nearest foot. Remember that when you're looking, if you were to look directly at a horizontal plane, right, the flag, you see five feet up on the flagpole, so that's already given, right? So we're going to be, here comes back the pink pen that you saw from the notes. All right, okay, I'm going to highlight that triangle for myself. All right, that's the triangle I'm working with. Now it looks a lot like the ones I just did, uh, you know, these ones we just did, okay? I need to find this length, and this is not the height of the flagpole, it's just the height above the horizontal that I'm going to do. It's going to basically give me this length right there. Okay. Um, as a, you know, most of these problems when we do them, especially when you have word problems, it's going to be tangent. And this one is, is no different. Tangent because I have this angle. The opposite is x and the adjacent is 30. So I'm going to use tangent of 35 degrees. Right? x over 30. Okay. Get that tangent of 35. 35 tangent point seven zero zero two equals x over 30. I'm going to multiply by 30. Oops, that should be a dot. 30 times point seven zero zero two. Okay, and then x is about equal to 21.006 feet. Okay, remember we're going to add that to the 5 there, right? that we have. So over here, higher to the nearest foot. Oh, well, that's pretty close right there, 21 feet. So we're going to take that 21, we're going to add it to 5. So we're going to have our final answer is about 26 feet. And again, that about, because these are all estimated there. Okay. So for the last page, man, I feel like it's just more of the same there. Okay. And on this, as you look at my solutions, when I post them, right, you can see we got the ratio ones that we just did. Okay, you can see on these ones, some of these, you know, just focus on the setup. You can see that I did may have done some of my math differently in past years. All right, this is, um, but really just make sure you set it up right and get that right there. Don't worry about this notation, right, for yourself. That's just a fancy notation. You, you worry about it more when you take this in, when you take a um, full semester of trig in your, you know, in two years from now, so, or a year and a half from now. So, um, really just focus on how you set it up and the answer is being correct, okay? All right, so that's all you really want to work, worry about, okay? As always, email me if you have questions, right? Um, and just let me know if there's anything you need help with, right? Because I can go and do more examples for you individually if you have those questions. Thanks a lot, right? Good luck with all these